The name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the love and mercy of God be with you. Let us pray. Loving Jesus, you call us to yourself so that we may know you as the true way, the life, and the truth. Much free grant us the grace to know you in person, to know you as our personal Lord and Savior. And may we Follow you always, for you are the only master, the only savior we have. May your Holy Spirit lead us to know all that you taught, so that we may indeed know you. Through you, Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark chapter 8, verses 27-33. At that time, Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way, he asked his disciples, Who do men say that I am? And they told him, John the Baptist. And the others say, Elijah. And others, one of the prophets. And asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Christ. And he charged them to tell no one about him. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. And he said this plainly. And Peter took him and began to rebuke him, but turning and seeing his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are not on the side of God, but of men. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear good listener, a good Thursday to you. From the gospel we have heard, I've chosen the theme, Who is Jesus for you? My dear good listener, today's gospel presents Jesus Christ to us as a teacher. A teacher who has been journeying with his students over a time, and at the end of the day, he wants to know whether indeed they have understood what he taught them. He gives them two sets of questions. The first said, he wants to know whether indeed the people among whom he has been preaching have known him. And so he asks them, who do men say that I am? Jesus wants to know, did actually the crowds understand who he was? Did actually the other disciples who are following him understand who he was? Did the women, did the youth, did the men really understand who he was and so the disciples begin to narrate to him what according to people Jesus is unfortunately the people seem not to have understood Jesus well for some call him the John the Baptist and of course Jesus is not John the Baptist John the Baptist was beheaded by Herod Elijah is the other prophet in the Old Testament he is not Jesus, although we know that Jesus comes as the prophet par excellence in the New Testament. And some call him one of the other prophets who they don't know. So at the end of the day, we understand that people have not understood Jesus. So the second set of questions is directed to the twelve themselves. Those who are with him, those who traveled with him. Those who saw him perform miracles and signs, those who saw him and heard him preach, he asks them, but who do you say that I am? He wants to understand whether the three years he has been with them have been of some avail. Have they really understood who he is? It is Peter, my dear good listener, who on behalf of the other eleven says, you are the Christ. And who is the Christ? The anointed one. They understood what Isaiah chapter 61 talks about in reference to that king, that savior was to come. The anointed one, the Christ. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me 
because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the lowly and to heal the brokenhearted. This is confirmed by Jesus himself in Luke chapter 4 from verse 18 and the following. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. So Jesus confirms that he is the Christ, the anointed one, who has been sent by God. Jesus comes in the power of the Spirit that came upon him following baptism, confirming what Isaiah had prophesied about him. So my dear good listener, Peter understood who Jesus was. And Jesus still gives me this question. He gives you this question. Who do you say that I am? Who is Jesus for you? For Peter, he is the anointed. But ask yourself, from the experience you have had since you became a Christian, which name would you give Jesus? Who is Jesus for you? Although Peter gives the name Christ to Jesus, he still had some issues. He was still like the other blind man we listened to yesterday. When Jesus spits on his eyes and lays his hands upon him, he asks him, do you see anything? And the blind man says, I see men, but they look like trees walking. Then Jesus again laid his hands upon his eyes and he looked intently and was restored. And so everything clear. So at first he was not seeing things clearly, but later on he did. So in the gospel of today, we see Peter, although says Jesus is Christ, but he does not yet understand well Jesus. He still needs the touch of Jesus. Why am I saying this? Because in the last part of the gospel, when Jesus begins telling his disciples about his impending suffering, death and resurrection, Peter does not understand this. He does not understand how Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one of God, that he is the savior who is to suffer. And so Peter rebukes Jesus. But Jesus in turn rebukes Peter and says, get behind me, Satan, for you are not on the side of God, but of men. So my dear good listener, in following Jesus Christ, we need to follow him as our way, our truth, and our life. We do not need our own schemes of work. We do not need our own lessons. We do not need to make Jesus appear the way we want him to appear. We must let him reveal himself to us. For this is the point that Peter lacked. He knew Jesus, yet... He was in some way still myopic. He had not understood that Jesus was to suffer and die for humanity. Who is Jesus for you? Who do you say Jesus is? Do you accept Jesus to show himself to you as he is? Do you accept Jesus to make an experience with you as he is so that you may understand him as he is? Do you accept to suffer with Jesus Christ so that you may die with him and reject with him? Or you still want to make Jesus appear the way you want? My dear good listener, I want to believe we need to be like St. Faustina who in a diary number 1345 says, Oh Jesus, I've been feeling extraordinarily well close to your heart during this retreat. Nothing disturbs the depth of my peace. With one eye, I gaze on the abyss of my misery, and with the other, on the abyss of your mercy. We need to understand, my dear good listener, that we are but weak human beings, imperfect. So, that's why we need to look at the abyss of our misery, but never forget, on the other hand, to see Jesus in his abyss of mercy. Kindly share this good news with the others, but also subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can always receive these daily reflections. The Lord be with you. May the God of love and mercy bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.